Years ago, I quit a job that was paying me $135,000 per year. A job that was totally stable and had great benefits like a 401k and complete medical and dental coverage. A job that I had spent six years in school for getting a master's degree. Fast forward to today, I work from home doing what I love, building and selling websites for a living. And I earn much more in a month than I did in a whole year at the old job. <laughs> But here's the kicker, I made a lot of mistakes along the way and I probably could have gotten here in half the time. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my journey so you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. I'm gonna specifically point out everything I did wrong and what I eventually learned was the right way to run an online business. And if you're an online business entrepreneur trying to hit your stride, this video is for you. But before I get rolling, could I ask for a little smash of the like button? A simple press of the like button does a lot to help my channel so I really appreciate your help in that department. Let's get started. So for university, I went to the University of California, San Diego to study electrical engineering and then after I graduated I did what any good electrical engineer would do I got a job as one working for a Silicon Valley startup company and eventually making about $135,000 per year but the truth of the whole situation even though that sounds all fine and dandy is that I was working 12 hour days not counting the commute just to get to the office and back now let me explain a little bit about the business that I was working for. We were a software company and we provided a software that allowed different businesses like Intel and Qualcomm, Broadcom, all these big tech startup companies to manufacture and build microchips. So it was very common that we'd have an on-site office at one of our customer sites where we could work and support them directly. Well, my particular no window office was right smack in the middle of all the other engineers that are super stressed out working their 12 hour days and that are trying to dump as much work as possible on the a vendor who they're paying anyways. In our particular area of engineering, it was very common in the politics to have your meetings, invite in the vendor, show off in front of your boss by literally giving a verbal beat down to the vendor in order to show off and gain more standing within your own company. So here I am working my 12 hour days, getting freaking owned every second of the way and dreading every part of it. Needless to say, it started to wear down on me. And one of my friends happened to notice me struggling and he handed me a very special book to him. That book was called The 4 Hour Work Week. And guess what I did with it? I threw that away. I was so indoctrinated in the whole path of going to university, working hard in company and working your way up the social ladder that I couldn't possibly imagine that there was another way of doing things that really required four hours of work per week. It was insulting. But eventually, after going after work and really, really hating my life, eventually I picked up that book again and started to give it a read. And a couple of the major themes that I found in the book were, one, the internet is a great place to make money, and two, there's this thing called WordPress where anyone can just make a website as long as you understand the complexities of, let's say, Microsoft Word. So a buddy of mine, a guy named Robert Rock, who actually owns Rank Club right now, started to brainstorm and started to study this four-hour work week and try to think of different kind of online businesses or websites or blogs that we can make to earn money. I have no idea how we thought of this, but we decided to make a website called caveday.com, which was basically just a blog about the stupid shit we did on the weekends. Stuff like getting super drunk at clubs and being hungover the next day and figuring out how to survive. We made stupid posts like the worst things to do when hungover or the Burning Man Hangover Survival Guide. I have no idea how it happened, but we ended up monetizing it by selling banner ads to hangover drink companies and stuff like that. We even tried monetizing it by throwing up some Amazon affiliate stuff like breathalyzer but they never sold. The problem with this site is there was just no keyword volume whatsoever on any of the stuff we were writing about. We didn't even know what keyword research was. We were just blogging and writing because somehow we heard somewhere that that's what you should be doing. So here's lesson number one. Blogging about your passions is great, but it doesn't matter at all if no one is searching for what you're writing about. You gotta be super intentional about your keyword research, especially if you're doing anything like SEO. So the website completely failed, never made more than maybe five hundred dollars a month or something like that was I discouraged? You know, not really. I had come from a completely rat race mentality and I never thought I was gonna hit it out of the park on the first try. Hitting out of the park on the first try is for people like Tim Ferriss, geniuses like that. So it became more about, hmm, how can I be a little bit more like Tim? Where's caveday.com now? <laughs> Guys, it's not even registered. That's how useless of a job we did for it. No one even repurposed it and used it for anything else. It's not even a PBN. So the name of the game right now is how to be a little bit more like Tim Ferriss. I ended up digging in more into the four hour work week and I ended up joining a meetup.com group that was actually studying and meeting together, discussing the four hour work week and holding accountability for each other to see their projects through. At the time, everybody in the four hour work week meetup was doing something called the 30 day challenge. 
The 30 day challenge was something that came out by a marketer named Ed Dale. And it was a pretty cool concept for an SEO course. Basically what they would do is every day they would email you a new step in the process of ranking and monetizing an affiliate website. So the first day they'll tell you to register a domain name. Second day you're going to set up hosting and step by step. And then by the end of the 30 days, you should have hopefully made a dollar online. Awesome concept. But the most awesome thing about this course was that for me, it had keyword research, which is exactly what I needed at the time. So we'd use a software called Market Samurai in order to find low hanging fruit keywords in terms of competition so we could rank and eventually monetize them. Thus was born yogatraveler.com, yoga-traveler.com. That's how high end this one was. So at the time I was just following the advice of doing whatever you're passionate about. So I was passionate about yoga. I was passionate about travel. So let's make a website about yoga and travel. And now that I had keyword research on my side, what could possibly go wrong? All right, all right, all right. So eventually the website started ranking for keywords like yoga travel and yoga retreats and stuff like that. So I decided to monetize it by selling banner ads and doing particular reviews of different yoga retreats for one-off money. The only problem with this is while I was making more money than cave day, it just wasn't passive at all. I had to actually seek out yoga retreats, pitch them stuff, give them a media pack or something like that. And then they might give me 200 bucks a pop. I mean, the coolest thing about it is that I would get free trips to a yoga retreat so I could review these things. I tried putting up one of those old school Amazon A stores on the site to see if it would sell any products like yoga mats and yoga straps and all that kind of good stuff, but nothing ever sold. And the problem was yoga travel is not a buyer oriented keyword. It has nothing to do with purchasing. People are just looking for information on yoga and travel and yoga retreats. They're not ready to buy anything. In addition to that, yoga and travel doesn't solve any major problems. Going to a yoga retreat is a nice to have, not a must have. So this pro tip lesson number two, if you're starting an online business, try to go for a business that's solving a major problem and you'll have a much easier time converting your visitors. Was I discouraged this time around? You betcha I was. I felt like I didn't have any business sense. I felt like I just didn't know what would make a new business do well. And there were people around me at that meetup.com meetup that were just crushing it and some with really nice, unique ideas. And I was just like, why didn't I have this idea myself? But I knew what I did wrong, so it wasn't time to give up now. Where is yogatraveler.com right now? Well, eventually it became a PVN, but it wasn't even good at that and someone let it go. So at this point in time, I had two lessons already that were nailed home with me. You gotta do your keyword research and you gotta go for keywords that have high buyer intent. So I fired up Market Samurai again and I found a super interesting keyword called best kneeling chairs. And it solved all these problems I needed to solve. This keyword had low competition, decent search volume. It solved a problem and had high buyer intent. Now it would be a complete understatement if I said that work was getting pretty bad at this point in time. I was starting to get severely depressed. I looked around me and saw the trajectory of where I was headed with the senior management and I saw unhappy people all around me that were completely stressed out. So on the weekends, I would just party my freaking ass off. I would go out, just get completely obliterated just to make myself feel a little bit better about the existence I was going to on Monday again. But thankfully, slowly the ergonomic chair site, the kneeling chair site started to make more money, eventually earning one and then 2K and then sometimes even having 3K months. The feeling of actually making some decent money online was indescribable. I felt like I finally cracked the code. Some part of me thought it was a fluke and that it could all go away, but I knew that the real risk was staying where I was at this job and I had to do something about it. So I handed in my resignation letter and boy, did that feel good. And remember before I told you how I really love travel, I decided I'm finally going to do what I wanted to do for a very long time, which is become a traveler full time. So I sold all my stuff and decided to book a one way ticket to Thailand. I knew I'd like Thailand because I had been traveling there every single year in order to help me cope with my work existence. And I had always knew deep down that I felt really comfortable, especially in Chiang Mai, Thailand, where I was going to set up shop. I was so excited to get there. But what I was even more excited about is when I actually got to Chiang Mai, got settled in and started working and started networking a little bit, I realized that Chiang Mai was one of the biggest SEO hubs in the world. At the time, there were folks like Glenn Alsop, Daryl Rosser, Brendan Tolley, and Kurt Phillip just doing their thing, doing their SEO in Chiang Mai, Thailand. The network was amazing. And at that time, as I was scaling up, I also decided it would be a good idea to find myself a mentor, which brings us into pro tip number three. If you happen to find a profitable niche, especially in SEO, build more websites to blanket page one. 
So I decided to make three more websites, another kneeling chair clone site, and then another ergonomic chair site selling yoga ball chairs, and then another authority site that was selling both those things and some other stuff on the side. Things started to really go my way and I broke through my first five figure month. I had officially exceeded my engineering salary. And living off that kind of salary, especially in Thailand, I was living like a king. So I really started taking advantage of digital nomading, spending a lot of time in Bali, Japan, places I've always wanted to live. But then all of a sudden, one morning I woke up and I logged into analytics and I found that my entire portfolio's traffic had gone to nearly zero. There had been a Google update and my five figure per month income had been reduced to about $300 per month. I remember going to one of the local bars and seeing a bunch of the SEOs that were there and at least half of them said, enough's enough, I quit. Even poorcaveday.com got annihilated. The reason that I got hit and the problem that I eventually identified after a lot of introspection is that I got lazy. Things were going right in my SEO game and I decided, you know what, if something sounds like a good idea, I'm just gonna try that out and we'll just deploy it on all the sites. I was kicking ass and everything I touched turned to gold so I didn't bother checking up on a new SEO tactic that someone was throwing my way. So after some really hard self-talk with myself, I eventually came out the other side because I realized, you know what, I'm an engineer. I know how to do this stuff. I've done this before. I was setting up single variable testing all the time and testing different tactics, testing different software in control environments to make sure it had a positive result on the other side of that test. I can do this. So from that day forward, I decided to test everything. Nothing would enter my process unless it was already tested in a controlled environment and proven to give a positive result. I tested backlink strategies, on-site SEO strategies, and a lot of conversion rate and monetization strategies. And this brings me to summarize pro tip number four, never trust anything that you read on the internet, especially when it comes to how to run your business, especially if you're doing any kind of SEO. You need to test everything. And once you set up a process that allows you to do tests like this in a systematized and repeatable way, you're really gonna start leveling up in your SEO game. So at this point in time, SEO got a lot easier and it finally started feeling like I actually knew what I was doing now. Here's one of the biggest keywords I ranked for getting to top five for 1.8 million search per month buyer oriented keyword. Here's a traffic spike, getting to nearly 80,000 visitors per day for the hit toy of the year. Here's a bunch of green arrows, which I got used to my rank trackers looking like. I even recovered all the ergonomic chair sites that died earlier. I was able to compete in much harder niches too. There was a diet pill called Garcinia Cambogia, and we went after that niche with a partner of mine. And this is the first time I ever broke six figures per month. He made so much money from this that he actually retired in Costa Rica, built a sustainable house and farm, and he's still enjoying it ever since. And despite everything going so well, I hit another wall. I had so many sites at this point in my portfolio that I was just running out of time. I was again working 60 hour weeks. Everything that I ran away from at my old job, I actually unconsciously recreated it for myself here in Thailand. One of the problems I had is I was really, really growth focused. So if I had a website that was making $20,000 per month, I would actually take about 18,000 of that and use that to build three more websites, hopefully with the goal of expanding the portfolio and making more than $20,000 per month. But the problem is if you take all that revenue and spend it, you only end up with $2,000 profit. One of my buddies noticed that I was struggling, I was unhappy and I needed some help. And I told him about the problem I was having just getting so bogged down in the business that I created for myself. He told me, why don't you go flip your websites? At the time, I only knew about Flippa.com and that one time I sold a World of Warcraft character on eBay and the guy actually did a chargeback and I lost the whole dang thing. So I didn't have a good experience with selling any kind of assets on the internet. I'm friends with these guys called Empire Flippers and what they do is they're a brokerage. You'll be able to sell your website through them. They'll do all the work. They'll handle all the vetting. They'll find you a buyer. They're going to take a fee of like 15%, but they'll probably sell your website for 15% higher than if you try to sell it yourself anyways. So I flipped a batch of my old ergonomic chair sites for over $100,000. This was a huge light bulb moment for me. You can actually sell a website right now, which is like taking a time machine in the future, collecting all the monthly earnings up until that point and getting it right now so you can invest them into other businesses. In the meantime, all the work you would have put in that website is gotten back to you immediately. All the time you would have put in that website, all the financial resources you would have put into it, and you de-risk. If anything happened to that website, which does happen to any business, it's not your problem anymore. 
anymore. So here's your next pro tip. If you sell a website, you can get nearly a 48X multiple on your business on your monthly profit. Your site that's making $5,000 per month can sell for $240,000. And that only becomes a bad idea if you're not able to produce another $5,000 site with a huge cash injection of $240,000 and you have four years to do it. The flipping model became a huge game changer for the business that I founded called LeadSpring. We're an agency that is completely set up for building, ranking, monetizing, and eventually flipping affiliate websites. We recently sold a website for over $600,000 and I've left a link to a video case study in the description down below. We also have other big goals. We have another website that we're growing into a huge household brand that will eventually flip for hopefully eight figures. In the process of growing LeadSpring, we were bringing on a lot of new talent, making a lot of new hires. So we decided to make a training program to get them up to speed quickly on the standards we have for building and ranking and monetizing websites. Eventually we decided, let's stop keeping this to ourselves and let's share this with others. And we eventually made this into a course called the Affiliate Lab. Then eventually we opened a JV department at LeadSpring where we would actually partner with existing businesses, businesses that can continue doing what they're best at, but we would handle the lead generation, and traffic generation, and then take some equity in the business. And I see this as a big path to our growth at LeadSpring going forward. Now the point I'm trying to make by telling the story is that everyone has a bumpy start in this whole journey of entrepreneurship. We're all figuring it out as we go along. If you want some more evidence of this, read Elon's biography or Phil Knight's shoe dog, the founder of Nike. Even the greats make huge mistakes and fail consistently. So if you hit a roadblock and get set back in your journey, the only problem with that is if you don't learn from it. And at the very least, pass some of that knowledge on to others so they don't have to learn these lessons the hard way too. And make sure to subscribe for more videos like these.